Acolyte leak? Yes, please. Hello everyone, and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron, and for today's video, we are headed to the world of Last Epoch. Mike, one of the senior developers from 11th Hour Games, held his normal Friday Q&A livestream, where he takes questions from the community, which means I get to bring you Dev Chat Round 9. Yes, we're already on 9. And for this one, Mike gave us a leak from my favorite class, the Acolyte. As always, I will share my thoughts. Please feel free to share yours in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to support smaller channels. All right, let's jump right into this. Our first question, and this is something that I was actually asked this week in my Discord, is to explain how buffing allies work. Does that mean it buffs minions? Does it buff other players? Does it buff yourself? Mike, go. So uh, I saw this question pop up in Discord and possibly Reddit recently. There's a few questions like exactly the same, which is kind of surprising it's happening all at once. And I don't know if, is there an entry in here for allies? Nope, doesn't look like it. Um, it is a anyone whose name appears green at the top, basically, that's like a combat entity. So like... Um, you are your own ally, you are your pet's ally, um, your pet is your ally, it's, it's everything that is friendly to you, whose name, like, if you were to mouse over it, would show up with, like, green outline, green at the top, that's an ally. And it's, it's to do with an alignment, so it checks your alignment is the same as your own alignment, is what it does. Now, three or four minutes later, Mike corrects this a little bit. You are technically not your own ally, so you cannot buff yourself through something that buffs allies. I hope that makes sense. One of the crafting questions I literally see weekly, does 11th Hour Games plan on adding new glyphs and different runes to the existing crafting system? Mike has a very long answer. Go. Um, we have a gigantic list we keep we keep making changes and theoretical changes to the crafting system it's a really um complex system even though it doesn't like appear that that really complex on on the surface right away it is shockingly complicated in the like small changes can have really big implications um and we do we do a lot of simulating of um ideas we have to modify crafting in different ways and like what it would do for the overall average difficulty to get uh, a T20 item, the overall average difficulty to get any item with an affix up to T5, um, a T16 item. There's like, there's different, there's lots of different things we run in simulations and how each item would affect, affect those things. Cause it's a lot of math, um, which could be a lot of fun, uh, but yeah, we, we've got a lot of ideas on things we want to add as far as glyphs are concerned, um, and runes as well, and those all interact with how, with, like, we've been considering some changes to the crafting system, some relatively minor on the surface changes, but does affect the difficulty to, you know, get to T20, get to T16 at different rates, and it's... We, we, we don't want to introduce more, uh crafting secondary like support uh, items so we call the, the glyphs are support items um and we don't we don't want to we haven't managed to uh come up with any that we want to add uh, even if we decide to change to make some changes to the crafting system type thing so we're, we're still waiting on uh i guess more finalizing crafting in general before we add more of them but we are definitely looking to add more uh, more crafting items, materials, support, like uh, runes, glyphs, all those sorts of things. Very long answer, but at the end, you heard it. For sure, we're going to be getting new runes and new glyphs, but he does not mention when. Now, whether Mike meant to or not, we did get a tease about the patch or the update after 0.8.2. Listen to this. The Werebear in general is getting a facelift patch after next. Um, both in a visual and functional uh, meaning, and also Spriggan as well, and something else maybe. 
You never know. Confirmation. That is confirmation. Now, maybe, I mean, I cover these every single week, so sometimes I'm like, does that has that been covered already before? Not 0.8.2, but let's say 0.8.3. We already knew that we were getting the new form for Werebear and Spriggan, and he just said and a third form. Any Diablo 3 players out there? Well, the question was asked, is there any chance Last Epoch will work on a system for bounties so that you could level your character through bounties instead of the campaign? Um, 1.0 probably won't involve a alternative to campaign leveling. It's not something we're really against, but it's something that is out of scope for our initial launch, I would say. Um, I mean, like, someone builds a system for it that happens to come in strong and works right away. That happens every once in a while. Someone just shows up with something they figured out in a dream. Be surprised how often that happens, actually. <laughs> but but for now, it's likely out of scope for 1.0. I'm not sure. Maybe. I guess is the answer to that question. <laughs> we all know that maybe is no. Simple question, why do we need a forge when we could just hit F anywhere in the world? And Mike, I love your response, go with it. Uh, the, the forges themselves right now basically just act as a tutorialization mechanic, where if someone has gone through the game and didn't realize they could craft and they come across one, then they have a chance to craft and they learn that it's a mechanic, that sort of thing. Um, they're kind of symbolic and you know it's it's like a, in town there's a forge we've we've talked about adding i've gone over this before but we've, we've talked about adding um like bonuses for crafting in town maybe there's um the one the one that i always come back to is what i think is a good idea but yeah, i don't know if it's a great idea is um you would have infinite shattering runes at the forges at the physical forges but they were like the physical forges could shatter but they were just mediocre at shattering. So maybe like, say a rune of shattering on a T20 item is gonna get on average, I don't know, 10, 12 shards. I can't remember what the math is. 15, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but then the, let's just call it 12 for argument's sake. And then like the forge itself would only give you six on average. So it's just a, like a worse math version of it. But um, either it's always free or it, costs gold and it's always available or something like that just so that there's utility you can get but the best version of it is always available out in the world that is an amazing idea the forges are useless we all understand that you just hit f but if they had unlimited shattering runes and you say a shattering rune in the world will give you 50 percent of the shards and the one at the forge only gives you 10 or 15 percent but at least you will always have it. That is a great idea. Or you can pay gold at the forge to get shattering runes, but you have to be in town. Another great idea. Please implement that as soon as possible. Like I said at the beginning, I'm very excited because my favorite class is the Acolyte, and you have all been so patient, it is time to check out our first leak. I have 19 different images to show you. Take it away, Mike. Um looking to rework uh, an asset that we we've had in the game that we didn't yes. make I don't think like bought it as part of an asset pack forever ago um, and we're, we're trying to phase those things out so it's 100% just like epoch made stuff and so we throw it up Mike tossing around some new concept art for it um, and let me know if you can figure out what this would be a concept to replace. I don't think it'll be that hard to do. It's not that hard because it's written at the bottom. Um, are you happy with the arenas as they are? On many occasions, lower level arenas are harder than higher ones due to mob type and rarity type spawns. <laughs> yeah, the, the arenas, um, I wouldn't say finished. <laughs> Uh, bought the game over a uh, head ago. I'm going to say that's year probably based on Riker's recommendations. You guys have come a long way in the last 12 months. Keep it up. Yes, we have come a long way in the last 12 months. And thank you. I would say I like number nine, like the upper body and arms, but I want it to have like these type of feet, like the four feet. Okay, but this is only nine images. So let's jump forward a little bit to another 10 images, all bone golem. 
not it's not a leak heavy week. I'm sorry, guys. We're um, you know, as we get closer to a patch, which we're we're starting to get closer to. We've said it's gonna be this month, so we're but at the very most 30, tw 24 days away from it at the very most. Is that right? <laughs> um. That's all we've said on it, but yeah, the, um... I will say, looking at these other ten images, again, the last one I liked nine, on this one I like ten. It's kind of cool, like a bone golem that's like floating, but hits melee, it would fit good with my wraiths. Which one do you like? I love it when Mike makes the decision to overshare. The question was asked, can you tell us anything about the up and coming changes to Endgame? I mean, I was just I was just kind of hinting at it a little bit, but I'll just tell you outright. Uh, there's some new monolith echoes types that are being added in. One of those is uh, a very short burst arena, so it'll be like uh, complete X waves in arena Y. As an echo in the monolith. I... In the monolith. So one of the options would be basically an arena type feature coming to echoes. Last and certainly not least, Mike has an announcement for us. And I'm going to actually allow this announcement to take out this video because it's going a little long. But before I get out of here, Mike, thank you so much for continuing to do these live streams again. The community truly appreciates it. Take it away. Um, one thing that we did that did happen really recently that you may not have heard of that we got a lot of questions about and I've been like dying to say something about but I wasn't sure when it was going to happen. Um, it just got announced yesterday, the day before, I think. Uh, we are on GeForce Now. Um, NVIDIA has a fantastic platform for bringing um, games that you already own on Steam to basically their GeForce Now ready devices. Um, so we're, we're on that, which is fantastic. And um, yeah, NVIDIA was, it was, it was really great to work with um, for this. So that was, that was, that was awesome.